So in Matthew 5, 4, Jesus says these words. He says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Now we are on week three on a little series that I'm not doing on the daily, but actually every other week for the daily on what it means to live a life that is truly blessed. And each week, what has been so interesting is that Jesus's definition is radically different than maybe how we often frame or think of that idea. And I would say that this week, it's no exception here. So the, the question is, is what does Jesus mean by those who mourn and how is it that they are blessed? Does it mean that maybe the person who is extra sensitive or who cries easily when it comes to watching movies or shows that they're extra blessed? Uh, and, and I would say not necessarily. Um, though it is an amazing gift that we do have a God who cares about our feelings, right? Who's near to the brokenhearted, who's the comforter, who scripture say, the, the scriptures say that he's the comforter, who actually can bring a person a comfort that is beyond any human or beyond what any human system can do. But the mourner that Jesus is speaking about is not just mourning for mourning's sake, but actually mourning over something specific. You know, Pastor Chuck Smith put it this way. He said that after coming to an awareness of myself in light of God and coming to a poverty, a poverty of spirit because of that, then when he's talking about those who mourn, he means that, you know, my heart is now also broken over my own condition. Now, this it's important to recognize that this is not self-flagellation or condemnation, right? Thinking like, I am such a bad person. Oh, I'm so messed up. I'm so... As believers, Romans 8 tells us that there is no longer condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Rather, what the text is talking about is those of us who recognize that Jesus has paid such an incredible price for our sin and it cost him his life. It cost the Son of God his life so that we, again, so that we can now receive the grace that we have received. So the mourner isn't someone who, so the mourner is someone who mourns over the sin in this way and who hurts over the way that it affected God and the way that it affects others. But another way that the believers to mourn is also to mourn over the way that sin affects our world, right? The, the way that we see the hurt that it brings, the, the rebellion, you know, the, when we see people are hurting themselves and others, we should be sad over it. And they mourn over it because ultimately that they know that God desires something so much more. That's the reason we mourn. It's because we recognize that God desired God's purpose for them is something so much better and they're gaining something so much less so you might be tracking with me now and wondering then well how does the blessed part come in i get this and and also how does a person receive comfort well firstly i would say they're blessed because jesus is jesus promise is that they're going to be comforted right jesus promises that if those who mourn in this way they're going to be comforted which again raises another question of how, right? How are those who mourn over their sin and their, the, the effects of sin, how are they comforted? Especially when we realize that we live in a world that seems like it is only getting more and more broken. Well, I, I would say firstly through pardon. You know, by your faith in Christ, when you recognize you need, when you recognize that you've messed up countless times, when you come to him and you look to him for forgiveness, check this out. He forgives you. He forgives you. In fact, when you trusted Jesus for the first time, your sins were forgiven past, present, and future, right? At least in the judicial sense. And when he sees you now, he sees you not as, you know, just this empty, just sinner who is just, you know, just messed up so many different times. He sees you as a forgiven son or daughter because he's already paid the price that we deserve for our sin. So for those who fear what's ahead or how God thinks of them, you know, who live maybe, in, for those of us who live maybe with this inner sense of guilt or turmoil, know that there is peace, there's comfort, and there's forgiveness that is found in relationship with Jesus. 
But secondly, I would say that he, that this person that mourns is blessed uh, and comforted also through God's presence, right? When we trusted Jesus for salvation, we were also reconciled in relationship with God. And now we get to enjoy this genuine relationship with not only the creator of the universe, but the one actually who created you, who you were created. And the best part about this is his spirit comes to now live inside of us, to direct us, to lead us, to empower us, to speak to us. And he promises that he's never going to leave you nor forsake you, but he's going to be there with you uh, every step of the way, this side of eternity. Thirdly is the promise. The promise. This is another way that we are comforted. This is another way that, that the believer, those who mourn, are blessed. As those who have trusted Jesus, as those who have trusted his work, right? The promise of scripture is that eternity with him is going to be our future. And though the world around us might be getting, you know, generally more and more broken, right? Though it is more broken than maybe we even realize, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the King, the one that God sent came to set things right and will set things right in an ultimate sense one day after he returns. You know, listen to some of the ways that the Bible describes this in Revelation 21. And we're just going to stop there. But I'm going to read from Revelation 21. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out from heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Well, God bless you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday.